One of the things on Linux that just kind of sucks is search. And I know when I say that, that a lot of people are actually going to disagree because there are a lot of tools on Linux to search. Like there's a lot of launchers to search. There's a lot of GUI tools. There's a lot of terminal tools. And when I say search sucks, I'm not saying that it's necessarily that there's no tools out there that are good because that's not true. I mean, locate and find and all these terminal applications that are used to search through your file system, they're all good to varying degrees on depending on what use case you're using them for. Uh, same thing with several different GUI tools. They're all good to varying degrees. The problem is, is that they all, there's no one like unifying search tool that is almost guaranteed to find what you're looking for. Sometimes locate works. Sometimes locate doesn't work. Sometimes find works. Sometimes find doesn't work. Sometimes you use like where is and where is will work. Sometimes where is doesn't work. Sometimes you use your app launcher or something. You search for an app and it works. Sometimes it doesn't work. I think you get the point. And honestly, that's what I mean when I say search on Linux is kind of terrible because it's kind of fragmented and you have to go through and use a specific tool when you're looking for a certain thing and you have to use a different tool when you're looking for something else. There's nothing that kind of brings it all together. So I've been on the lookout for an application that does search better. And today I'm going to be showing an, an app called F search. I'm not convinced that this application is any better than any of the rest. I haven't used it for a long time, just a few days, and it seems good, but it, it's kind of like all the others that it does certain things really well and it does other things nah, not so well. So let's go ahead and jump in. We're going to take a look at F search today. So this is what F search looks like out of the box. I've done no customization to it. There's not much you can customize about the look and feel of it. You can choose between a light and a dark theme. That's pretty much it. It's a GTK based application and it's available pretty much in every repo that I've tried it in. Uh, I, I believe it's in Debian and Ubuntu and it was for sure in the AUR. So if you want to download this, it's fairly easy. And I'm pretty sure that there's snaps and flat packs, but don't quote me on that. Uh, the, the point is it's easy to install and it was easy to launch. And it was very fast. And that's one of the things that I really like about it. Like if I search for something here, let's just say I search for wallpaper. You can see as I type, the stuff comes up. It's like instantaneously fast. And it's, that is so cool, right? Usually when you, like if, if I open up a terminal here, if I do a locate for the same word wallpaper, it, it does come up pretty fast, but then I also have to scroll all the way up, and some, some terminals don't have scrolling capabilities. Sometimes you have so many search results, it kind of overpowers your terminal, and you can't scroll back that far because you don't have your history set that long. You know, it has all sorts of problems, right? So the great thing about F search is that there's no limit on that, and you scroll down, and so it's a little bit easier that way. Plus, what I like about it is that it does folders first, so it search for searches for directories first. Uh, it would all it will also allow you to do. Let's just say I know I have where I have most of my wallpaper, so I could do walls slash uh, other walls, and it will actually show me there, and it will actually go through and limit the search to that specific path so everything that shows below this are going to be in this directory here and that's kind of neat right it's kind of it, it's smart enough to know that you're searching for a path you can turn that off and i'll show you the settings here in a minute but the best part about this is still the speed because when you first launch this if we quit this and relaunch it Every time you launch the application, it indexes your file system. And you'd expect then for the application to be like really super slow. But it's not. If I open this up, it opens up. It's like instantaneous. It, I don't know how it does it, what kind of magic it's using to index the entire home directory that quickly. But it does. And we know that it actually do, in, indexes because if we go here to the preferences, if I can click on things, clicking is hard. Uh, it'll actually, it says it updates database on start. You can also have it set at cron type so it will go through and index every you know 15 minutes or 15 hours or whatever you want. You can go through and include certain directories that you want to search. So this is not searching the whole your whole hard drive by any means. It's by default, it just indexes your home directory 
for your user, not all users, just your users. If there are certain things that you don't want it to search, you can go through and exclude those directories by entering them here. Uh, for example, if you wanted to have it exclude all of your Git directories, you could put that in here. For the most part, there's not a ton of settings here, but it will allow you to go through and set single click to open. It will allow you to show the icons in the name of the column. It will allow you to show tooltips and highlighted search items. So there are a few things, but there's not a ton of stuff here that you can you know, tweak and stuff to do this. The thing about it is, I feel that it's best for searching just one directory or one home directory. And specifically, it's best at searching for personal files. I've been using it mostly to search for wallpapers that I know vaguely what you know the names are of. I've also been using it to search for certain uh, dot files. So if I search for xmonad, for example, I see all the places I have my xmonad file. So I've downloaded xmonad config files from a couple different people, but I also have mine here. If I were to go through and use this more often, I would probably have it exclude the things that I've downloaded from GitHub because usually when I'm searching for something, I want mine, not other people's, right? Another great thing is that if you're searching for a specific file type, so let's just say again, we want to search for wallpapers and we can go over here to this drop down and search for just pictures. So this way it will show us just pictures. If we wanted to search for, let's just say, all scripts. If I just search for .sh, it'll actually go through and show me the things that have .sh. It's not so great with file extensions because as you can see, it actually showed me a couple of audio files here. But for the most part, we're seeing just the extensions of .sh. Uh, one thing it doesn't seem to let you do is search just by extension. So like you can see up here at the top, all the stuff you can search and filter by, archives, audio, documents, pictures, and videos. It would be nice if I could go through and just say, hey, uh, this is the extension I want to search for because some files aren't uh, pictures or audio and stuff. They're scripts or they're, they're open document files or whatever, you know, and I want to search for those. There's not real ways. I mean, I could go through and do documents, but that's just going to be hit or miss because sometimes it may not have the right ex extension or it might not qualify as a document for whatever criteria they're going through and using. Uh, in this case, it looks like it's if you type in something and you're looking just for documents, it's looking for things like TXT files and uh, like Excel spreadsheets, apparently. Uh, but it, it doesn't actually show any ODT files. So I know I have a ton of ODT files that would technically be documents, but they're not showing up here. So it does have its limitations. And that's what I was talking about at the beginning where I'm not quite sure that this was fulfilling my need of having a one-stop shop for search because despite the fact that it is so fast, it's not necessarily something that I would be able to use to search for things very specifically because it doesn't have like an advanced search. That's one thing that I was kind of missing about it is that when you go to like a website or a database website or something like that, a lot of times they have just the regular search bar, but they also have like an advanced search form where you can go through and narrow things down by different criteria, whether it's, you know, category or, you know, whatever, it doesn't really matter. There's usually a ton of different options for you to go through and fill out and to try to narrow down what you're searching for. And when I first downloaded F search, I was really hoping for something like that because there's not anything really like that, that I've tried so far on Linux, like, especially with like com command line tools. When you want to do some searching, you either have to just use locate or find, or you have to use like regex in order to search for things, you know, that way. And and I'm horrible with regex. So I just wanted something simple and F search is definitely simple, but it's a little bit too simple. So uh, that's my first look at, at, at F search. I've been using it for a few days, so I guess I really can't call it a first look, but whatever. It's good. I think I will have it. Uh, I'll keep it installed and see if it gets updated to have some more features and stuff like that. And uh, I didn't, one thing I didn't cover was that it does allow you to search through with regex. If that's something that you're familiar with, you can go through and do things like that. I wasn't even going to attempt to do that on camera because I would just embarrass myself. So that is it for this video. If you have used F search or you have other recommendations for really cool search tools, you can leave those in the comment section below. Make sure you like comment and subscribe all that stuff. I really do appreciate everybody who hits that red button. Uh, I'm trying to aim for like 7,000 subscribers by the end of the year. That'd be awesome i remember like just a few months ago when i was saying hey 
Wouldn't it be really cool if I got to a thousand subscribers by the end of the year? I'm pretty sure I said that in many different videos when I right when I first started, like at the beginning of the year, like January and February, I was kept saying, well, you know, I really want to get to a thousand subscribers by the end of the year. Look at us now. Wow. Anyways, thanks everybody who has subscribed. If you want to follow me on Twitter, you can do so at the LinuxCast. You can subscribe to me on Mastodon and Discord and all that stuff. All those links will be in the, the video description below. Uh, you can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Devon, Chris, East Coast Web, Gen 2 is fun too. Petrico, Primus, Marcus, Meglin, Jackson, Nev Tools, Steve A, Sid A, Mitchell, Arch Center, Amateus, Merrick, Camp, Joshua Lee, J-Dog, The BSD's Rock, and Peter A. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.